Congratulations, Barca. An incredible come-from-behind victory. Again, much like this summer, when you guys decide to play, you can really play. And I hope you decide to play like that all the time. After the game, the ref said, give you guys a real compliment. He said that was um, a real pleasure, a joy to watch your team play, the way they moved the ball. He says he's never seen such passing in the U10 division ever before. But then he said something else, tacked on this thing. He said, keep doing it. It'll pay off. Now let's talk about what he meant. Because if you think about the game, we scored five against three. But uh, our stats were far more dominant. We had 189 passes, 20 goal scoring opportunities versus three or four for them. That's possessions in their box. We dominated in possession. And yet the question is begged. How did they ever score three goals? And that's what I want to talk about. I focused on two factors here in this video. The first is, uh, because of our spacing, how vulnerable we are to counterattacks and what we have to do to stop that. And the second is a factor we're going to call the death pass. So let's talk about counterattacks and how we're vulnerable to counterattacks. What's interesting is, earlier that day, mighty Barcelona uh, lost 2 nothing to Hercules. Uh, they were uh, up by... Uh, they had the dominated possession. Hercules stole the ball a couple of times, got down the field, and scored. And uh, just after that, AC Milan with Ibrahimovic and Robinho dominated possession, but lost the ball a couple of times. And Sassana was able to go down and score. Let's watch one of those goals. It's just very telling. Watch this counterattack. Here's Milan with the ball. Perlo calmly bringing the ball up the field. Not going too fast. A little side pass. Another little side pass. Looks up. Pass, pass, pass. 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 Possession. Beautiful possession. Shot. Blocked. Attempted pass. And a counterattack begins. Here comes a counterattack. To sing him. To through ball. Well, now that was really a great shot by the Sassana player. But let's diagram this as it comes up to us in our game. We're Barcelona here. Let's assume we're going this direction in the game, and we're shooting on this goal here. So there were times, let's just say that our rover here had the ball, and is perhaps looking to dribble this player or perhaps trying to get the ball out to our, our right attacker who's out here. But if, uh, if the green team is just able to intercept that pass or stop the dribble, look at these wide open spaces that the green team gets, the Dragons had against us, these wide open gaps to counterattack into. And that's why it's so crucial uh, when we're playing for, and if we lose the ball for our our rover, our center mid, to get back on defense and for our defenders to pinch in to create a crowd and for our attackers who are midfielders to get all the way back on defense to help create a crowd to stop the other team. That's why I'm such a monster about getting back on defense because we're so well-spaced, uh, does leave gaps when the other, ball, other team gets the ball from us. So let's talk about the death pass. Uh, there was a time one of our players had the ball uh, out here at defender uh, in the first half and was moving a little bit side to side, ankle breaking, looking. Felt a little pressure from the dragon here, but there wasn't too much pressure. So uh, automatically turned and looked to make a switch. And normally making a nice switch when you feel pressure is a good idea. The pass went right to Luke without recognizing that Luke was already guarded. And when that pass came across to Luke, we're lucky that the Dragons didn't steal the ball and, and, and go in to score. Luke made a sliding tackle pass and got the ball out to Miles, and we were able to move on with no consequences. But in the second half, we saw this again and again, and we made about six death passes in the second half, where one of our defenders had the ball back here on the field, feeling a little bit of pressure, not too much pressure, but enough that they thought, oh, better pass, 
And so passed one time to the goalie, uh, two times trying to pass right in here, which is what how the other team was able to steal that ball and get those shots into the goal. And uh, later in, in, in the half, we, we saw another couple coming over from the right side, back in the middle. And what we're going to call the death pass is any sort of a pass uh, under pressure into this area right in front of our goal. And it's great to make all your switches in your passing. I really want you to do that, but to do it when it's nice and safe and not under pressure. When you do get the ball out of here on the sideline, the right direction to take the ball is to the side. When there's pressure, is to the sideline. Do your best. Ankle break. Build space. If you have to boot it or just kick it away up the field, that's fine. Just to work the sideline and not jam any passes back to the middle. That's the death pass. We made six or seven on Saturday as a team. Whoever plays for defend, defender or sweeper from this team cannot be making these death passes. And if we can cut those out of our game, that did lead to two Fierce Dragons goals. The failure to get back cost us the first goal, and then two death passes cost us the next two goals. If we can cut that out of our game, uh, we'll be smooth sailing in uh, future games. Good work, team, and I'll see you at practice.